Okay, okay, sir. How are you for the last? I think we met in the last last month itself. Is it right? Online. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have a previous FDP program before. And when are they coming uh, yeah, back to India, sir? Yes. Ah, uh, not yet, not yet. I didn't come back yet. You have settled in Taiwan itself. <laughs> not like, like that. Uh, in India, we just uh, yes. we don't know exactly the status. Like what? What is the COVID status outside? Uh, in like uh, we are just creating there some like thirty to forty days. We need to be more vigilant than what we are earlier. Uh huh. Yeah. Is it yeah, right? Yeah. Like is it yes, uh, yeah. something like a wave? New wave is coming or? Uh, it's constant before. Uh, just now it raised like every day, like 30,000 cases. Uh, even in Taiwan also, there's few cases. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, probably it will increase, I feel, because of the climate change. And uh, yeah, they also got uh, people also travel and they don't have restrictions nowadays. Uh, there is no boundaries. People keep traveling everywhere. <laughs> It's from Australia, uh, from Australia onwards, we have some we have some constraints even for traveling. Also, for in India, some com oh. people coming from China and they are they are doing this COVID test and all things. Again, uh, they have started India. <laughs> uh, even yeah. even the government of AP also in the afternoon they have given some preventive mechanisms. What should be done? Something like that to mitigate this COVID effect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's hard to combat this issue. Yeah, yeah. Uh, everyone have to uh, pay their attention and they have to contribute. Not like one or two people we follow, but others they don't. Then mm. there is no use of doing it. Yeah, yes, everyone yes. should put their inputs. Yes. So can we start the session, sir? Not long yes, sir, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, sure, Sweet. sure, sure. Sunil, yes. sir, please. Yes, sir. I'll share the screen. Sir, uh, good evening, sir. Loganathan, sir. Oh, OK, OK, OK. Yeah, you can give me an introduction. Sorry for the interruption. Yes, sir. Yes, uh, yes. Sir, uh, first of all, we'd like to convey our thanks and regards to you, sir. Uh, despite of your busy schedule, uh, you accepted our invitation and uh, joined with us to share your valuable insights, sir. So uh, before entering into the session, let, let me take the privilege to introduce you, sir. It is my great privilege to introduce Dr. Lokanathan Veeramuthu. Dr. Loganathan is working as a research assistant professor in Organic and Polymeric Materials Department, National Taipei University of Technology, Taiwan. He also served as an active member in the Research and Development Center of Smart Textile Technology. His research interests include wearable sensors, electrospun nanofibers, prowess kinds, light emitting diodes, wearable electronics, and smart polymeric wearable applications. He has won several research presentation awards in national and international conferences and served as invited speaker and a resource person. He is serving as a reviewer in peer-reviewed journals such as molecules, sensors, polymers, fibers, nanomaterials, etc. So really, uh, we are glad to have you as a resource person in this faculty development program, sir. So now I request you to enlighten us for uh, uh, facial self-powered micro electronics for the next generation wearable technology, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Now the Thanks program. for the wonderful introduction, sir. Uh, yeah, uh, I'll start my presentation right now. And uh, yeah, here it is. Mm -hmm. Give me a moment. I try to just make sure more. Yes. Uh, am I visible? Yes, sir. It is clear. Yes. OK. Yeah. Uh, thanks for inviting me again. And uh, it's my pleasure to be a part of this FTP. And uh, yeah, today my topic is about uh, facile self-powered microelectronics for the next generation wearable technology. And uh, myself, Dr. Loganathan Viramuthu, and uh, let's go straight into the topic. And first of all, I'd like to introduce uh, the country where I am at present. And uh, this is the Taiwan map, and uh, here the northmost part called Taipei. And this is 
it's Taipei is one of the tallest building uh, called 101. It has 101 floors, 101 floors there. And uh, this is my university, the University of Technology. This is the main entrance. And uh, yeah, now I'd like to introduce something like uh, what we are seeing in our real uh, applications, because we know that uh, many of us are aware of uh, eye watches or some other wearable techniques like what we are using in our day-to-day -day wristbands or something. So here I'm going to discuss how they prepare this kind of wearable devices and what technology it adapts. And uh, yeah, first of all, I'd like to introduce uh, the different applications where the wearable technology is playing a crucial role. And uh, it starts from wearable displays, energy storage, uh, energy generation, uh, e-textiles, electronic textiles, e-skin, healthcare, so all these things can be done. And uh, especially uh, if you consider about healthcare, that is also suitable for some wearable in vivo as well as uh, some uh, skin mountable patchable devices so that you can track your health records like that. So uh, there are many small microelectronics that can be easily impregnated into your body system or it can be just put uh, onto your skin directly. It will be invisible, so nobody can know what devices you have on your body. So it's very tiny devices that is possible to be happening due to the uh, evolution in the nanotechnology. And, uh, I want to introduce some of the patterns here. Uh, I'd like to introduce with the pointer. Yes, here. Uh, there are different patterning techniques and uh, how to form those kind of patterns, why patterns are quite important in terms of wearable electronics. And uh, because our human skin is going to exp is going to um, give you a lot of stress and strain to your uh, wearable devices. So that kind of stress have to be accommodated with our devices too. So uh, yeah, it has to release those stresses. So it has to accommodate those stress kind of micro patterns or nano patterns. So. Yeah. Here you can see uh, there are different uh, energy uh, like wearable renewable energy systems uh, because we know that in the past decade everyone is aware of solar cells, how they harvest the photon energy from the sun and then they can extract the energy. In the same way you can also extract the body motion energy and then you can use them. So that kind of devices we can shortly term it as self-powered devices. You don't want to input energy to your device to work. Extract the energy from your body motions itself. So that's good. You don't want any battery system or capacitive systems to yeah uh, make your device to work. So that is quite important because uh, we know that the energy crisis is uh, yeah, major crucial issue in all the countries' economy. So yeah, it's better if we can de uh, devise something like that kind of self-powered electronics. Um, but the problem is the power generation is not that big as compared to some solar cells or thermal energy resources. So what this kind of power can be used, in which ways it can be harvested and how it can be used in the real time. And if we are going to track our human body motions and we can also track all the things, not only like our health system, we can also connect with the different uh, fields like technology, transport, security system. wireless loop near field the communications or RFID this can be transmitting all of our personal data to our uh, remote healthcare systems like that so they can easily track your records and they can give their suggestions on your health and then uh, now I want to introduce something based on materials because uh, uh, all the sensors are relying on some materials the material plays a major role so uh, I'm going to introduce a material called perovskite, and this is very hot uh, material. Uh, in recent years, everyone might have heard about it. 
and it has uh, multiple functions, not only in one application, it is applied in the variety of application because it has a variety of properties in it and it is easy to tune. For example, in case of uh, light emitting diodes, you can tune their colors very easily. And in terms of uh, energy harvesting, yeah, it is having uh, some interesting roles. So we can look into those things. And it is possible to tune their morphology and it is possible to tune their dimensions from 3D, 2D, 1D and 0D structures. So that is quite good durable electronics, especially microelectronics or nanoelectronics. So now we can see uh, this is a perovskite structures. There are different kind of perovskites. Here you can see this is the general formula called A to B B I X I six X six. There are different varieties and uh, they have been using this kind of perovskites in different field for photovoltaics, photo detectors, memory devices, photocatalysis and for light emitting diodes and how they prepare this kind of material by using different techniques and uh, this is a hot injection LARP and uh, some other 3D methods and vapor based methods to form or by hand grinding. So there are many different variety of methods available and if you want to look into those details you can directly look into this article and uh, here we can see uh, perovskites have a different property like if you are going to compress them or are going to deform them that is going to give some crystal uh, something like deformation is going to create some dipolar uh, polarization actually uh, that means the dipoles will get aligned depending on your stress so that kind of dipole interactions or polarization is going to give you some interesting properties so that can track using something like uh, pfm um, yeah piezo force microscopy with that uh, we can easily track their polarization curve. With that, we can say that it is going to experience phase change like that. That kind of phase change is important in terms of uh, energy harvesting. And uh, here we can see how the perovskite structures look like. And uh, yeah, here you can see a BX3 type. And uh, there are different properties and how they can tune their bond length or electronegativity changes. What will happen to the structure? All these things can be yeah, helpful for the for just to revise you for understanding what is called perovskite and uh, how it's going to play a major role. And uh, here you can see how the crystals are going to get deformed. When you are going to deform your structure, I already say if you have a material and if you want to create energy, or if your body is going to move, that time if you're going to put your device, wearable device onto your body, this kind of crystals are yeah, going to experience some stress, right? That kind of stress is going to create some polarization. That polarization can be tracked here. In the figures, you can see uh, they are experiencing the, with the, they are different voltage so that uh, you can see they are conducting these experiments under different frequency. And uh, here you can see there is a ice series, this curve like this. This kind of curve is showing that it is having very good piezoelectric properties. So this kind of piezoelectric property is already available in some natural materials and some other synthetic materials also. Why especially we want perovskites? Because we know that perovskites are going to rule the entire wearable electronics. And uh, we know that is piezoelectrics uh, in the past, they have done with PZT. PZT is something like uh, perovskites. Uh, which is uh, inorganic material, but it has lead in it, so that is toxic. So in order to avoid those things, there are that kind of challenges. So we have to track them and we have to evolve with the different uh, materials so that in perovskites itself, we can uh, tune their atoms so that we can harvest some good perovskites that can be biodegradable or it will be more stable than other perovskites. So that kind of materials can be helpful for the energy harvesting. And in this case, you can see how the, the probe is going to work. Uh, they, this is the mechanism you can see. Uh, they have the system like this. And uh, here we'll put our piezoelectric materials. And uh, here you can see after scanning the sample, this is our sample. And if you are going to use this instrument, you can end up with this kind of data. And here you can see the phase changes, uh, like here 180 degree change. And here also you can see the butterfly peak. So this shows that uh, this let's uh, 
piezo trick material is going to be helpful for energy harvesting. And uh, here you can see their amplitude values and then phase change values. So this kind of curve is quite important for identifying the material which is having the piezoelectric nature in it. And here also you can see uh, they are doing that kind of studies, but in, not in the perovskite material. This is different. PVDF is a polymer called polyvinylidin dichloride, and this is uh, having some different phases like alpha and beta phases. If you can confine your PVDF in the beta phase, that is going to give an excellent property called uh, piezoelectric property, which is going to enhance your piezoelectric property. So here you can see how they are confining the beta phase structures by using some graphene oxides. So they are preparing some. They are seeing the difference among hybrids, composites versus uh, pristine material. Here you can see they are identifying their D33 uh, coefficient values, piezoelectric constant values. So this is the formula they will use to calculate. And here you can see the difference among pure PVDF as they are comparing to the composite. So with this, they are able to say that it is having very good piezoelectric coefficient means it's going to generate so that is good for the application part. And I want to highlight the significance of wearable electronics and the electro spinning part because I am familiar with my uh, field called electro spinning, in which we can prepare some nanofibers or microfibers. It's easy to prepare. So nowadays, many people are focusing on this kind of uh, electro spun wearable electronics. So yeah, in the recent years, the wearable electronics are governing uh, in all the fields, not only in wearable health care. Uh, it's also playing a crucial role in establishing some wearable optoelectronics. In this case, recent few years, we work on some perovskite materials and then we form some stretchable optoelectronic devices like uh, LEDs as well as here you can see we also form some self-healable polymeric materials that can be blended with perovskite materials. So that can be helpful for creating some self-healable light emitting diodes that is uh, which is going to reduce your EBS generation. So that will be helpful to reduce the environmental toxicity. So you don't want to spend more on your from your pocket to invest on new new devices. You can keep using your material even if it is going to get damaged and heal by itself. So that's good. It can heal on its own at the room temperature. You don't want to heat or something. So it's good. And uh, here you can see uh, there are many different structural materials. Here they are engineering the structures like microstructures and nanostructures. Why they want this kind of structures? I already mentioned that uh, because our body is going to pose some mechanical stress and strain to our devices. So it has to accommodate all the stress and it has to be constant. Uh, the sensory outputs or the electrical outputs should be same. It should not vary uh, big. Uh, it should not experience any big change. So this is quite important. So the people work on this kind of structural engineering. And now I want to introduce the fiber preparation methods. There are different methods ranging from milk blowing, centrifugal force spinning, low spinning, laser assisted milk blowing, uh, microfluidic electro spinning. So in this case, everyone is uh, relying on something like polymers. We need some polymers and then they heat and then they push them out by using different, uh, for example, in centrifugal spinning, you are using some centrifugal force to make the polymer to eject through the nozzle so that you'll form some fibers. The same way in the other case, in blow spinning, we are going to supply the gaseous molecules so that uh, with the help of uh, controlling the pressures, we can control the fibers. So this is how it will work. So in the electro spinning, we are going to control by electrical voltage. If you are going to control the electrical voltage and the collector distance and other factors, which will influence your fiber morphology. And uh, in this case, you can see how the fibers uh, in the initially in the textiles they make, uh, they just use the textiles and then they coat some material on it. So you can get some hydrophobic coating, for example, if you're going to use it for self-cleaning application, or if you want to prepare some good solar cells, or you want some coating, right? Because uh, we know that solar cell efficiency is entirely relied on the yeah uh, it's going to absorb the light so if it is having some dust on the surface which will uh, uh, usually will create some troubles in harvesting better efficiency so 
in order to avoid that we should give some good coatings over the solar panels that is how it works but uh, recently everyone don't want that kind of coatings because uh, it's not durable it's not going to last for a long time so we want something inside too so we put the materials inside our polymers so it can remain functional for a long time. So we use different methods like electro spinning, wet spinning and dry rolling. And these kind of materials can be used in the bearable devices ranging from smart glass, smart bands, smart watches, and uh, invisible uh, skin sensors, soft wearable devices, or even for making tattoos, it is helpful. So yeah, how we prepare nanofibers, this is the methodology, this is the basic setup. We put the polymers here and we use the pump to eject the polymer out and we supply the voltage and then we use the collector to collect all the fibers so we can tune the fiber morphology like smooth porous hollow sheet by using some water soluble polymers if you are going to etch them then you will end up with the hollow structures this is how it will work and this is the basic setup there are many different methods to form so you can look into if you are interested in and uh, yeah, this is the recent article we published. This is a review article. If you are interested in electro spinning, you can go through this is open access. And uh, here, this is another article in which we have discussed the uh, importance of electro spin nanofibers in sensory application, ranging from pH sensing, moisture sensing, temperature sensing, all these kind of sensors we have discussed. If you are interested, you can have a look on this review. And uh, yeah, this is from the same article. And uh, I have shown the electro spin have uh, multi -di the diverse uh, facets. It's going to give exciting outcomes in different fields. And uh, here you can see uh, sensors. There are different mechanisms ranging from piezo resistive, capacitive, uh, piezo electrics, triboelectric, magnetoelectrics. There are different ways. And the energy output we are going to harvest, uh, it's like uh, microwatts or nanowatts, so which cannot be helpful for a real-time application in our day-to-day -day electronics, but it is suitable for the sensory applications or some wearable uh, devices, it's okay. This kind of power outputs are okay for some small devices. So yeah, how we can track our human body motions by using this kind of PSO resistive sensors, because if you're going to strain your material, our conductive materials, in this case, we are using some graphene oxide and silver nanowires here, and that is going to be your conductive material. If you are going to stress them, what will happen? The conductive pore collusion will get broken. So that time you can monitor your resistance. With the help of that, we can track our sensory records. The same way, if you're going to apply some deformation like this so in, in this case you can see in the initial state the pore structures are not going to uh, create some interconnected networks but if you are going to apply some stress on it like this if you're going to apply some pressure on it the electron percolation will start to establish so that you can easily track your current or resistance so that you can track your sensors easily in the same way uh, here you can see how they are monitoring the pulse rate they are putting the device onto the uh, here in the wrist and you, uh, the pulse rate they are able to track and they are connecting with some wireless devices and cloud computers they can analyze all the data and then they can track your health records in that way and the other way they can also use some fibers like here one and here one two fiber yarns they use and then they are going to apply some pressure on it on that time what will happen your electron uh, tunneling effects will happen so that kind of tunneling effects will create the resistive changes. That resistive changes is going to show how much pressure is going to be experienced by your devices. This is how PSO resistive works. And here you can see they are creating some microstructural devices like here, microdome, micropyramids, and micropillars. Here they are comparing three different structures and they are studying the stress concentration on the devices, device interface. So if you are having higher stress, that is going to give a better sensitivity. That kind of sensitivity This is the capacitance and uh, we should know what is capacitance and this is the formula for capacitance and the major thing is one is area and the distance and the area is the area of our this one uh, dielectric materials and then uh, we have the distance between these two electrodes positive and negative electrode so if you are going to apply the pressure on this device it it will 
reduce your thickness, right? So with the help of this variation, we can track our capacitance change. In this case, you can see they are using some nanofibers or microfibers. And if you are going to apply the pressure, the distance between these electrodes are going to change so that you can easily track your capacitance so that, uh, yeah, you can track your wearable devices easily in that way. So this kind of sensors work on something like here. You can see they are creating some porous structures or uh, some rigid structures like this one, and which is having some micro uh, rigid structures like this. So these kind of uh, mechanisms can be helpful, but this kind of mechanism, you need some um, power input. Like you have to pass some voltage or current to track all this, but in our self power devices, this is another example here. You can see how the capacitive sensor work. And in this case, they are using electrospinning to form some fibers and they are comparing flat and fiber structures. And uh, here you can see the deformation is good in terms of uh, nanofibers or microfibers. So you can extract better capacitance change, delta C by C naught. So this will give better yeah, outputs, right? So in this way, they are going to do the capacity pressure sensors. And uh, this is how the dielectric composites, why they want, how they can improve the dielectric constant. These kind of things they have discussed in this article. And uh, this is another article we published in this. We have shown the progress, recent progress in conducting polymer composites uh, and how they are used in nanofiber based strain and pressure sensor. In this, I have detailedly explained about all these mechanisms and what are all the trends going on in the recent few years. So if you are interested, you can look into this. This is open access article. Everyone can. Sensors here, we are going to use two different uh, dielectrics. For example, here you can see there are different materials. They have uh, positive and negative charges, right? So if you are choosing uh, one from very higher positive value and higher negative value, you will be getting very good voltage output. So in this case, you can see how they frame the devices like here, dielectric one and dielectric two, and they use the metal electrodes, two metal electrodes. And if you are going here, which is going to create some surface potential difference. This kind of charge potential uh, is going to give the electron to flow. So this electron flow you can harvest as your voltage output. So this is how your self-powered variable device is going to work. And uh, here, this is again, uh, this is again, uh, I'm showing the triboelectric series. There are different materials they are being used and uh, they have identified this kind of positive and negative material. If you are going to use the same mechanism, here also it is explained. Here you can see how the current is going to be created when we are going to apply some pressure on. So yeah, and here I'm going to hide. This, for example, if you want to create some high addition stretchable electrodes, you want to create some micro uh, structure. Uh, substrates that can accommodate all the conductive materials in it, even if you're going to upgrade with your some because our body is going to work every day and it's dynamic and we cannot uh, predict everything. So it has to be very robust. It has to uh, retain its functionality even under stretchable conditions. So they have to design this kind of interlocking structures or rock soil, root soil interlocks or something like nature inspired structures that can be durable and uh, something like which can mimic our skin like performances. And in this case, you can see how they are investing on something like investigating on magnetoelectric sensor. In this, they are blending some magnetic, uh, magnetic particles. Uh, in this case, they are not only studying the piezoelectric property, they are incorporating both the things like magnetoelectric, piezo as well as magnet. So if you are going to experience some magnetic inputs, your material is going to change their dipoles, right? That kind of dipole alignment is going to create the piezoelectric outputs like here. You can see the micro voltages they are able to generate. Uh, here they are using, uh, you can see the structure. They are using some ecoflex as well as some magnetic particles like here. And then they, yeah, they are able to track. They are trying to optimize the geometrical conditions. Here you can see uh, here. In this case, uh, they are optimizing the conditions like uh, top and bottom width. You can see this is 8 mm, 6 mm, 8 mm, 4 mm, and this is like hemisphere. 
So from this, they are able to track which one is going to experience a better stress on it. So that kind of stress is going to give a better electrical output. So here you can see their uh, compression rate and total magnetic flux before and after compression and the change of magnetic flux. In the case of Frustum 4, this one, you can see it's yeah quite visible when compared to others, the stress experienced by this one, it's quite high. So the magnetic change of magnetic flux is going to be very high in the case of Frustum 4. So this is how they optimize the conditions, then they can yeah, create some intelligent sensors. And now I want to yeah, introduce my work and uh, this is uh, recently published in ACS. And uh, here we can see, uh, I'm going to show a different pattern called uh, a nanofiber plus micro wrinkle structure like this. This is going to be similar like our human skin. And uh, here I start with another electro spinning process to form some nanofibers and then I use some PDMS elastomers and then anneal and then I peel them and then I wash them. Then you'll be getting some nano crevices there because then all the nanofibers are going to be etched out on the surface. The others are going to reinforce your polymers. So we are going to pre-strain them and form some nanoparticles like uh, conductive nanoparticle for that I choose silver and we use some traditional methods called uh, precursor plus reducing agent to form some silver nanoparticles. And this is uh, how the structure of our polymers look like. And uh, here we can see this is the real time image. And uh, if you are going to see them in the AFM, you can see the microscopic view and uh, you can see the wrinkled structure and they have many nano crevices as well. And this resembles like our human skin. And uh, here we can see uh, we are able to confirm that uh, silver nanoparticles have been successfully formed onto the surface by using some FDIR techniques. And uh, we also characterize the surface energy values in order to compare the flat surface and the pattern surface. So here we can see the silver nanoparticle formation is quite good in terms of uh, pattern structures. Why it is? Because uh, it is having very good surface energy when we compare the flat PDMS surface energy it's like 12.91, whereas in terms of uh, PPDMS, the pattern PDMS, it is doubled already. So it's good, it can be rapid. If your surface energy is high, means you'll be having very good uh, formation of your nanoparticles. So we optimize those things and we also study the sheet resistance. And uh, if your sheet resistance is going to be stable, even upon stretching or flexing, then it can be a good electrode. That will be a very good uh, substrate for building your wearable electronics. So we are comparing the flat structures and the pack. Structure is uh, not that good, and you can see the resistance change is getting higher and higher within thousand cycles. But in terms of pattern PDMS, the stability of our yeah our sheet resistance is quite good even after ten thousand cycle. So yeah, th that is uh, due to this kind of uh, stress relaxation. So here we can see the IV curves and the sheet resistance with respect to different tensile strain, and we also study the bending cycles. And uh, here we are able to see the three different structures we form and we optimize the conditions. And uh, here we can see uh, how the strain sensor is going to be working. And uh, here uh, we are also able to notice that uh, their environmental stability as well as their mechanics, uh, mechanical stability. Here we can see uh, they have very good mechanical strength as compared to flat structures. Flat structures, they are uh, soft and uh, they don't have higher toughness, whereas in terms of patterned uh, PDMS electrodes, they have very good toughness. So it can be good for the wearable applications. It can be more good and uh, it will be having very good stability. And in terms of uh, antibacterial effects, they are also quite good because we have some silver nanoparticles, which is going to experience some, um, yeah, this kind of uh, properties. And uh, now we are able to track the body uh, motion sensors like here, um, like finger motions or muscle motions or monitoring the pulse rates. And even for yeah, a speech recognition, if you're going to speak loud, uh, it can easily track. You can see the intensity variation between the mild one and the loud one. 
So yeah, depending on your annotations, it will be having different kind of peaks. So this can be helpful for the human machine interfaces as well. And uh, now we are able to see something like strain in sensitive pressure sensor because in this case we are forming some strain in sensitive electrodes even on strain conditions, which is giving very good, uh, which is maintaining its conductivity. So it can be helpful for strain in sensitive pressure sensor because our body is going to move every time and which is dynamic. So it will experience a lot of strain on your wearable devices. Even under that kind of condition, if you are going to monitor your pressure, then it is good, right? So we are able to do this kind of experiments and uh, we harvested uh, very good uh, outputs. Here we can see the resistance value. We use this kind of formula to calculate and uh, you can see uh, even 0, 10, 20, 30, uh, the, the sensitivity change is very less. So negligible. So that. For the electrode, we also do some proof of concept demonstration. In this, we are able to see their ACL device, which can work even under flexion conditions. And as well as for preparing some organic light emitting diodes, we also demonstrated by using some PFO electroluminescence materials. And uh, here we can see the differences among patent PDMS and patent free strain PDMS LEDs. So, yeah. And the other one is uh, we also demonstrate some wearable energy generators. Uh, this is from nature inspired structures. There are many different structures they have already reported. And in this case, why we need this kind of triboelectric series, I have already explained. And uh, how the mechanism works, we already know. And now, uh, how they prepare this kind of 1D. Uh, energy generating systems because uh, they have different charges, positive and negative charges. We already see the mechanism here. Again, they are showing the same thing and they are choosing uh, some stretchable materials and some conductive material and some uh, positive and negative in order to balance those things. They choose the different surface charges and then they track their system and they form this kind of uh, textile uh, like uh, like woven web structures with that uh, they can track their mechanical acquisition data if you are going to put some pressure on that part you can see the virtual image like this with test or something if you are going to put on your mat in your room then if someone is going to step in you can easily track somebody is getting into your home right so that is how it works. And this one is another one. Uh, here I'm going to show the alpha phase and beta phase. I already explained in the PVDF case, uh, we have two different phases and beta phase is quite good for the energy harvesting and how to tune the beta phase by having the interaction with some molecules so that they can polarize in a very good way. Then you will be having very good uh, energy outputs. And this is another paper we published and this one is based on uh, some energy generators, textile made, uh, based energy generators. And in this case, we are using two different polymers and we tune them, we optimize the conditions, and then we form the nanofiber based structures like here. You can see the SEM structures, and then uh, the mechanism is reported here. And uh, we are uh, forming these kind of structures under strain conditions. If you are going to relax and stretch, relax and stretch, that times uh, it's going to create the distance changes between the positive and negative part, right? So that kind of, uh, yeah, that kind of motions is going to create some electrostatic induction. That kind of uh, energy outputs can be stored in the energy storage devices. Then it can be utilized any time you want. So this is another article we published in the chemical engineering. And in this case, we use some piezoelectric polymer called PVDF, and then we use our perovskite material, quantum dots. And then here you can see the quantum dots. There are many quantum dots inside the nanofibers. And they have some colors also because we use, because uh, this kind of iodide based uh, perovskites, they are exhibiting the red color. So we can easily notice the presence of perovskite quantum dots inside the fiber with the help of EDS or confocal microscopy. And this is the schematic you can uh, visualize how the nanofibers will be and how the quantum dots are inside uh, encapsulated very well inside so that perovskite can be stable over a period of time. And this kind of perovskite structure, we already know it's going to create some piezoelectric outputs uh, that will have 
uh, some crystal deformation if you are going to apply the stress on it then eventually you'll be getting this kind of uh, dipole alignments and changes with respect to your stress condition so with the help of that uh, we can see the difference among co conventional structures and when we are going to blend some perovskites what happens the voltage is getting tripled so it's quite good for the application part and uh, we have demonstrated different applications like e mask sewing machine e shoes e cloth e gloves so all this can be done with this kind of uh, fiber structures and uh, this is another article we recently published uh, in nano energy and in this case we are comparing two different structures we are confining uh, the nano reinforcement into our fiber structures so with the help of electro spinning we do this and uh, here we can see the process how we start with our sds electro spin structures and then we reinforce them by using some silver nanoparticles and then here you can see the whole view and if you zoom in you will be able to see a lot of uh, nanoparticles silver nanoparticles on it and we also study the uh, eds so we can see interconnected penetrating networks interpenetrating networks are existing in this structure so this will be a very good reinforced structure which is going to give a very good mechanical stability and uh, this is how uh, we prepare some smart textile with the help of uh, this kind of ercf structures so here we start with our ercf structures and then we use our piezoelectric polymer like pvdf in the previous case we use some perovskites into it like a dopant that will enhance your piezoelectric property in this case we are not using any dopant we just use a winding method to form some fibers on it then we are able to get better outputs when compared to some uh, bit spun structure bit spun structures are nothing but they are like a normal wire like structures but this one is reinforced structures so which is going to give very good mechanical durability so you can see the results in the upcoming slides if i have i'll show you and uh, here you can see the perspective figure how the devices are connected with our uh, microcircuit controllers and then uh, we can easily know the gestures by gestures you can understand what they are going to say so this is like animation interfaces and then uh, you can see depending on your different fingers you can see the responses with the help of uh, resistance change and here you can see uh, it is also sewable you can see it can be sewed into the garments like here and uh, they are very stable and here you can see the differences among the wcf and the ercf structure ercf structures are quite uh, robust you can see their mechanical strength is in and compared to wcf structures they are very like they are limited within 200 uh, percentage strain but in terms of uh, reinforced structure they have very good uh, stretchability and which is confirmed with the simulation studies we compared the normal structures and the reinforced structures and we study the recovery ratio this dual strain all these things and we also studied the environmental stability finally we have done the demonstration for the energy harvesting devices with the help of uh, wet spun structures and the electro spun structures reinforced structures so yeah here we can see the differences among uh, this is like uh, this one wsng and esng the performances are quite good when compared to wsng structures because uh, you can see the differences in the console simulation also you can see they have very good electrical outputs that is uh, verified with the help of uh, our yeah real time applications as well so here we can see uh, they are quite durable up to 30% strength it can work better but after 40% it's getting degraded because there is some delamination or there is some breakage in the pvt structures so yeah now uh, we have demonstrated all this kind of durable energy generators what will be the futuristic task because uh, everyone is looking on this kind of uh, interesting wearable devices right so now uh, because this kind of structures i have demonstrated is like fiber based structures but some of them they use some thin film based structures so if you are going to use that kind of structures which is going to create some discomfort to your body to your skin so that will create uh, rashes like here so that is not good so people are working on some perforated structures like this but in our fiber case we don't want all this and they also try to optimize the holes like this they compare three different structures and they optimize their strain conditions they study their yeah you can see the resistance changes is bending cycles they are doing and from this study they are able to say oxotic uh, uh, but dumbbell shapes are quite good for the application because their stress is strain distributions are quite low 
So that can be useful for very long term cycle. The durability is quite good in that way they are demonstrating. This one is published in science. Uh, sorry. This one is another application. They are also demonstrating some flame retardant uh, textiles uh, with the help of uh, some natural materials and uh, phytic acid as well as some polymers like PEI. And then they use some silver paste to form the electrodes and they have some spacer system like here. If you are going to apply some pressure, it will connect and it will cause this kind of, uh, yeah, uh, this this works on this kind of mechanism. Same like uh, triboelectric generators that uh, what we have seen before. They use dielectric systems like uh, two electrodes and dielectric system in between and they study the voltage the same way. But here they are trying to enhance their performances by using some flame retardant materials. So these are all the futuristic tasks. And uh, yeah, if someone is interested, they can work on this kind of field. And uh, the other important task is to, because we all get all the data as now, and we are going to transmit all the data by using some high speed uh, internet connections, Wi-Fi. So uh, what is the data security for all our yeah, data? So it's quite important privacy. So Everyone should be aware of these things, so people work on those things also. Yeah, and uh, it's quite important. And there are different body area networks, and uh, you can see there are many like Zigbee, Instium, Sensium. There are many different ways to connect your yeah wearable devices, but also have some associated security risk and how to control. There, there are different strategies. Yeah, because you people are from computer science background. If you are interested, you can have a look on it. And uh, I'd like to end up my talk, uh, and this is my recent publications, and if you are interested, you can have a look on it. And these are all the references I followed for this presentation, and I'm available on the social networks. If anyone is interested, uh, please follow. And uh, yeah, these are all some scenic beauties in Taiwan. And uh, yeah, this is some cultural heritage uh, spots I have been to, and uh, this is some national place, national park. Uh, in Yang Mansion, and this is in central Taiwan. They have very good hiking spot, and they have tea plantation and all the um, antiques they have. And if you are interested, you can look into. Mm, this is my, my teammates, and this is my professor Chichinko. I want to thank all of them uh, for their uh, contribution in my research, as well as they uh, they give their inputs and they give their suggestions in all my experiments. And they are very helpful. And uh, this is my university website. If anyone is interested, uh, if uh, they are giving some scholarships too, you can all have a look on it. And I want to thank all my collaborators. Uh, in this time, they have a very good support for me. Yeah, they give all their inputs and they have their uh, own time uh, for for their family as well as they also balance all these things. So. It's good. Everyone have their own time and uh, wish uh, everyone will be having a very good uh, uh, new year ahead. And I want to thank the uh, Professor Kiran sir and other organizing committee members and uh, Sri Vishnu Engineering College for Women for inviting me as a resource person. And thank you one and all. And thanks for your patient listening. And I welcome the questions from the audience. If anyone is interested, uh, you can contact me or you can give me a mail also. Thank you. So participants, if you wish to interact with Professor, you can unmute yourself and please interact, please. So participants can interact with our Loganathan set by unmuting themselves. You have any queries? Please unmute yourself and just have a discussion.
I hope they are clear, sir. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's very general okay, topic. Wait. Anyone can understand. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. moreover, you made it very beautiful image presentation, right? Every slide contains <laughs> four images, three images. So yeah. you've gone through because sequentially one after one. Because if I say everything one. in the text, nobody can understand. I remember. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So better yeah, to very beautiful presentation, sir. Yes, thank you. Uh, yeah, sir. Uh, thank you so much, sir, uh, for uh, joining with us and shared a beautiful presentation to all our uh, participants. Uh, despite of your uh, busy schedule, as well as your, uh, it's already some odd time. Uh, even in this time, you spare your valuable time for us, sir. So we, yeah. uh, the Department of CSC, Sri Vishnu Engineering College for Women, Bhimavar. We thank you, sir, for joining with us. Thank you so much, sir. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Loganathan. Have a nice day. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah. See you again. Yeah. Happy yes, New Year sir. for everyone. Yeah. Yes, yes. Thank yes. you and wish okay. you the same, sir. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye.